What topic should we talk about? Uh? Chinese New Year is coming. Everyone is busy preparing. Nobody wants to watch this channel one. Uh. Hi. Oi. Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my Fuck Show. I often get this question. Chinese New Year is around the corner. Carlsberg can buy. Uh. Hennigan can buy. Uh. Since it is the Chinese New Year season, I want to talk about not one, but two stocks in the same video, Carlsberg and Hennigan Malaysia. Before we start, I want to take this opportunity to address this CNY myth. Well, not just CNY, but whenever any major festivals are approaching, ah, people will start asking, this one can buy, ah, that one can buy. Ah. I can understand the reason they do that. The demand for certain consumer products could spike out during festive seasons, like beer. If these products are selling well, yeah, wholesale, I can buy up those stocks before everyone else does and make a quick gain when the stock starts to rally. Hello, friend. If you can think this way, it means everyone else is also thinking like you, okay? In fact, all these stocks that you think may have seasonally bump up in sales better record better results during festive seasons. If not, Confucius say, hold TYT on the share prices. The right question that you should ask instead is, how much better is the sales this CNY season compared to last year's CNY? See the difference or not? The brewery business is a funny sector in Malaysia. Because alcohol is the halal man, Samo Malaysia is one of the most established Islamic financial hub in the world. Because of that, all Sharia compliant funds, which makes up a third of all institutional investment funds in Malaysia, cannot invest in this sector. On top of that, since two thirds of Malaysian populations are Muslim, it is safe to say that generally the retail interest on brewery stocks is not as strong compared to other sectors. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man! Yet, brewery stock valuations do not fall short of other consumer stocks at all. Point I want to make is that if logically speaking a stock has less demand, the valuation should be cheaper. But in this case, Carlsberg and Hennigan Malaysia, both listed in a market that is predominantly Muslim, have their valuation on par with consumer sector in general. But them so special. To understand this, we have to first know that alcoholic beverages are super priced in elastic. Price in elasticity means that consumers are not so affected by the price changes of the product. Food products are generally a very good example of price in elasticity because no matter how expensive beer is, 10 ringgit per month, drink. 30 ringgit one time, drink. 150 per hour, drink. No matter what price it is, we just want to drink. The opposite of price inelasticity is obviously take away the in and becomes price elasticity low. For price elastic products, the price increases by one cent or so, people are going to cow bear, cow boo. Let me give you another example, cars. Recall in the announcement of budget 2022, the government announced that SST exemption of 100% will be extended for CKD cars and 50% on CBUs until June 30th, 2022. Technically speaking, it's a discount of 3 to 6% only, you know. But it is enough to influence many people, especially those who have been looking to buy cars to say, shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. The good thing about price inelastic products like breweries is that whenever they decide to increase prices, the demand for their products is very mildly affected. I know what you are thinking. Like that means breweries earn them a lot of money? No? You are just half correct. It is true that alcoholic beverages are priced inelastic, so no matter what the retail price is, the demand is quite stable. And that does give people an impression that they are earning a lot of money. However, the truth is, the brewery industry is considered a sinful business and governments like to tax sinful businesses as an avenue to increase its revenue without people complaining about it. Do you know that Malaysia has the second highest tax on alcohol worldwide at 175 ringgit per litre of alcohol by volume? My point is, most of the time, the increases in retail prices of alcoholic beverages is due to an increase in regulatory taxes and duty, which has zero impact on the brewery's financial performance. Put off, right? To be fair, sometimes the breweries also increase prices for themselves. 
The latest one being Hanneken that increased its prices between 5 to 10% in September 2021. And not too long after that, Carlsberg also took the opportunity to do the same in November 2021. If you're the kind of drinkers who only drink draft beers in pubs and restaurants, you probably won't feel the price hike imposed by both breweries. This is because the price hikes are mainly imposed on off-trade sales, meaning only beverages that are sold in supermarkets and retail stores are getting more expensive. In my opinion, that's a brilliant strategy. This has got to do with our consumer behaviour. Let me explain to you why. Suppose you are going to a pub, the waiter comes to you to take your order, and your first reaction is probably, what is the happy hour offer? Ah? Right? Right? The cheap skate for your burger. Anyways, I'm also like that. Now, let's change the situation to buy a case of beer or add a few bottles to the trolley in the supermarket. Take, take, just take. How much? I also don't know. Check the receipt. Ah, wow, it's so expensive. That's the mind play that the breweries are playing with consumers. Moreover, on-trade sales are pretty much still doing quite badly as entertainment outlets and restaurants have not been operating at their full capacity thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. So chances are the last round of price increase in the brewery industry is the right area and could possibly bring better profitability to both Carlsberg and Hanneken Malaysia. Do you know that Malaysia has the 10th largest population of alcoholic drinkers worldwide with an annual spending of 2 billion ringgit on alcoholic drinks? Shots, 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 shots. Now, you know why even though Malaysia is predominantly Muslims, both Carlsberg and Hanneken still set up their manufacturing hubs here and are both listed on Busan Malaysia. In 2022, dine-in restrictions started to ease thanks to high COVID-19 vaccination rates. With that, going forward, on-trade sales should be on zone. The next catalyst to really make brewery stocks blow off the roof would be when Malaysia reopens its borders for tourism again. To be honest, this one is a wild card because at the rate that the virus is mutating, nobody knows when it will be suitable to allow foreign travellers to enter Malaysia borders again. For Carlsberg, the prospect is slightly better since their financial performance does not limit to Malaysia only, but Singapore as well. If Malaysia is not doing well, the sales in Singapore might be able to offset the downfall from Malaysia. It seems that the worst is over for breweries. Many people think that even with the new variants of COVID-19 virus continuing to mutate, the government may actually consider reopening its borders for tourism with a certain set of strict SOP. We simply cannot afford a lockdown for too long if we want our economy to recover. If that's the case, why aren't the share prices of Carlsberg and Hanneken picking up? I thought the stock market is all about future expectations? That's a question that I have been asking myself too. After meditating in Guam Musang for 7 7 49 days, this is my conclusion. First of all, the current government that we have, Song Song implemented Chukai Makmo. I'm sure you heard the saying that once people tasted blood, it's hard to quit. Bro, Stop. In this case, blood is referring to Chukai Makmo that the government is going to collect in 2022. At this point, it is just a temporary tax collection to help the government to raise 3 billion ringgit during the pandemic. But honestly, come on, who is going to give up this amount of money overnight? Nobody, 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 nobody. Secondly, everyone is talking about GE15 the next general election. For good or for worse, PAS will try its way to form a collision with any political parties that seemingly have the best chance to win so that they could be also part of the government. We already know their pattern to shut down any activities that are against Islamic teaching. So, if PAS is in power, at least on market sentiment, investors may choose to sell off stocks that are essentially tak halal. Lastly, while we have been saying that breweries are a price in elastic business, many people lose their source of income during the lockdowns. 
this time round. Perhaps people are really cutting down on unnecessary expenses to save money. How many of you have decided not to buy alcoholic drinks for CNY for that reason? Let us know in the comments below. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.